Your thoughts on that warning from uh, Suzuki saying that it will take bold action if needed. Yeah, so definitely the development uh, continues. Uh, we had seen really a step up in the jawboning over the last few sessions, uh, but it does seem now that we would be approaching level four, which is where we have seen intervention occur in the past. Um, yesterday we were still at level three, but I think as we get more and more heightened here in terms of the tone, uh, we, we could expect that at any moment. And obviously the move towards 152 earlier in the session uh, clearly prompting that. Will it be closer to 152 or 155, some say? I mean, how are you looking at it, especially uh, on expectations that the Fed will move and perhaps, you know what, Japan just needs to wait out on the Fed? Yeah, so we had been talking around this, around what sort of levels make sense for people to try to fade this move if and when it happens, because clearly that has been a good strategy over the last uh, few months when, when needed. Uh, you know, as we approach the holiday weekend in, in certain parts of the world, and also the fact that we have some key US data coming out when the markets will be closed, I think there is definitely a heightened concern uh, around the kind of volatile move that you could get around the intervention. Uh, and for that reason, I think uh, traders will probably be scaling their offers a little bit higher higher um, than maybe would be expected um, just in case the you know perhaps they allow it to extend a bit further um, than expected uh, and no one wants to be caught uh, too early. Uh, Suzuki says that Japan will not rule out any options. What options are there? Well, I think we've learned from the past that there aren't that many options left, and this has clearly been one that's been deployed before. Uh, I don't think the market's expecting anything new in terms of um, a mechanism here. I think it's, you know, that what we've seen in the past will be exercised again. Uh, but certainly coming off the back of, the, you know, the first rate hike in 17 years last week, this is not really the situation that the, the Ministry of Finance wanted to be in. Apart from the yen, the yuan is also in focus. I mean, a lot of traders are now wondering, what's the tolerance level for yuan weakness? How are you reading, uh, you know, where the yuan goes from here, especially on the back of what we saw uh, in terms of fixing on Friday? Yes, we do believe overall that um, using one weakness is, is not the way to really, you know, work out of the deflation. So I think at this stage, I think the market clearly was surprised a lot on Friday, and that was certainly the discussion to start the week. But we are expecting, you know, somewhat more stable fixings closer to where expectations should be, uh, rather than uh, a move like Friday. So how much weakness do you think the PBOC is willing to tolerate? I think at this juncture, uh, we can allow a bit more, uh, but certainly uh, we don't expect anything too meaningful from here. Uh, obviously, traders are looking towards the levels of 725, 730. But beyond that, I think, uh, you know, I I'm not sure that we're really seeing much positioning, um, apart from obviously what we might see in options space. But certainly in terms of uh, cash positioning, it it's, you know, the expectations are more for around these levels in the short term. And speaking of tolerance, Laura, is there a sense that the Fed is willing to tolerate 3% inflation? I mean, what are you looking at? Sure. So I think, you know, what we saw last week from Chairman Powell was clearly more tolerance than was expected by the market. Uh, you know, in, in terms of that press conference, the dovishness, the looking through of the January and February CPI prints, uh, you know, there was certainly, I would say, more patience uh, in, the, in letting uh, this disinflation story play out. Um, and certainly it does seem at this stage that, you know, he's not backtracking. He thinks we're on track largely. Uh, and for that reason, you know, I think for the Fed at this stage, unless we see some really meaningful upside surprises, we do still think that first rate cut is going to come in June and we are expecting three to come this year. And if anything, um, House view would probably err on the side of more cuts than that, than, uh, than less, which is interesting because I think the market would probably be facing the other way. A lot of people were burned to start the year in terms of dovish rate cut bets on the Fed, obviously looking for that March cut. Uh, but, you know, I think the market is also nervous that even June could be, could be in doubt, obviously, if you do get those strong prints, but that's not within our expectation at the moment. So we do remain fixated on June. And I think for now, like the market has been impressed by the Fed's tolerance so far. Right. So how are you positioned, Laura? 
Sure. So I guess one of the trades that people do like is steepeners, uh, obviously in the bond curve in the US. Um, now, these are trades that really people have been running actually for quite some time. And you might have thought that perhaps there'd be more vindication last week after Chairman Powell's press conference uh, in terms of that tolerance. But clearly with that longer run dot also rising slightly, uh, although that was within expectations. Uh, but clearly this is a setup that makes sense for a steepener position in terms of, you know, rate cuts potentially coming sooner than even the inflation. Uh, numbers are allowing, uh, but certainly that the risk that in the longer run, you know, the market could be allowed to run a little bit more hot. Uh, and, and obviously, we've been upgrading growth and even inflation forecasts. So from that perspective, the steepener makes sense. The one thing we worry about mm -hmm. is the fact that, as I said, these are trades that people have had on for some time. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of new money put towards that trade in the last week, which suggests to us that conviction is lower than you might have expected uh, after that press conference. Uh, for that reason, you know, we do think that the positions probably do make sense over the longer run. Uh, but here and now, I think, you know, the market is is a little bit unsure. You know, I think what we've seen in terms of data misses, like if it's 0.1 on a CPI uh, or PCE, mm -hmm. et cetera, I think the market gets very, very um, concerned. And, you know, we can really have some outsized moves. So conviction levels are rather low. And I think if anyone wants to run duration at these levels, um, they're a little bit more cautious. So playing it via the steepeners or just playing in the in the very front end space.